Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera anak-anak pelajar. Program P4S iaitu Practice for Success adalah merupakan satu program kecemerlangan akademik yang dijalankan bagi membantu semua pelajar untuk mendapat keputusan cemerlang dalam setiap ujian penilaian sumatif iaitu UPS. Bersama-sama dengan pelajar bagi membincangkan soalan P4S yang pertama ini terdiri daripada saya Puan Siti Hajar Rifkah Cik Nadirah dan juga Cik Pariha. Diharapkan anak-anak pelajar mendapat manfaat daripada perkongsian ini. Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to discuss on the answer for our trial as a trial UPS1 which is our practice for success before us. Okay, so we proceed to the first question. Okay, the first question asks us about you have to identify the bond. What is the bond between the hydrogen of one water molecule and the oxygen of one another mo water molecule. So, soalan kat sini, dia direct bagi tahu ada dua water molecule. One water molecule and another water molecule. So, it involve two water molecule and you have to identify the bond that link between the hydrogen uh, in the first water molecule and another an, uh, and oxygen of another water molecule. So, it is direct to the point. So, it is here. So, the bond between water molecule. So, it is hydrogen bond. Okay, make sure lah. You can identify what is the question asked you. It is between. Okay, between what and what? Between uh, water molecule and another water molecule. Okay, and then the second question asks us about the property of water that help to moderate its temperature. So, alam ni direct juga, uh, direct to the point. Kalau awak recall balik yang mana, okay, kita ada statement ni kat dalam um, bahagian high specific heat capacity yang mana water also helps to moderate temperature of earth okay sebab apa uh, kita punya uh, water is is a good buffer for heat insulation because of water can store high amount of heat okay uh, so nak kata matahari ni kita tahu dia akan uh, dia 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 uh, release heat energy produce heat energy so the the heat can be stored Okay, the large amount of heat can be stored in the water. So, water yang involved kat dalam bumi ni, ha, termasuklah ocean. Okay, so soalan dia dah bagi tahu kat situ. So, it is high specific heat capacity. Okay, and then kita proceed yang mana which of the following groups are removed from monosaccharide to form disaccharide or polysaccharide. So, kat sini dia kata what are the groups involved to be removed. Okay, so from monosaccharide. Hmm. Okay, for example, to disaccharide. Okay, contohnya kat sini adalah, okay, kita ambil contoh disaccharide adalah maltose. Okay, and then if you proceed to the formation of maltose, yang mana it consists of two alpha glucose. Okay, uh, two alpha glucose yang mana OH, hydroxyl group from the first alpha glucose will be removed and hydrogen from another alpha glucose will be removed. So, both of them, Okay, uh, will be removed in the form of water molecule. So, OH and H kat sini adalah, OH is hydroxyl group. Clearly, we know. And then, hydrogen kat sini. So, the answer is B. Okay, direct to the point kan. Okay, and then, sekejap ya. Okay, next adalah, which biomolecule is responsible for the insulation and energy storage? Okay, kat sini, dia boleh jadi dua eh. Sama ada karbohidrat and lipid. Okay, so ada dua jawapan yang lebih kurang kat sini. Okay, energy storage yang mana carbohydrate, for example, starch and glycogen can be involved. And then lipid juga boleh. Tapi, okay, kita ada statement lagi satu yang mana dia sebut pasal insulation. So, insulation kat sini dia sebenarnya refer kepada heat insulator lah. Heat, insula heat insulation. Okay, so heat insulation kat sini, ya, yeah, termasuk kepada lipid lah. Okay, so awak boleh tengok dalam nota awak part lipid yang pertama, the importance of lipid. The first one is act as energy storage. Okay, because of lipid can store energy efficiently. Okay, reasonnya awak boleh tengok lagi lah kenapa. Okay, kat sini ada. And then the second one is heat insulator. So direct to the point, the answer is B. Okay, and then the the next question. The small amount of molecule with a central carbon atom which is bonded to ada beberapa kat sini. So dia kata first one. Okay, dia kata central carbon atom. Central carbon atom. So, kalau dalam lukisan, awak kena terus draw. It is C. And then, dia kata bonded with different um, or different group. So, the first one is, okay, dia kata kat sini, bonded to carboxyl group. Carboxyl group is COOH. And then, amino group. Amino group is NH2. And then, a carbon containing group, okay, it could be any group. Uh, so, kita akan kata dia adalah side chain. And then hydrogen 
atom. Hydrogen atom is hydrogen. So kat sini, it is uh, clearly indicate that uh, indicate it is amino acid. Okay, amino acid. Make sure you know um, the structure of amino acid then actually. So ada ni dah terus menggambarkan apa jawapan dia. Okay, awak boleh tengok structure ni. Yang mana? Okay, kita ada uh, carboxyl group, kita ada amino group, R is the side chain and hydrogen. So, it is amino acid. Okay, next adalah which of the following statement is true about peptide bond. Okay, peptide bond is actually involve protein. So, awak kena cari yang mana sebenarnya dia talk about the protein. So, okay, kat sini dia sebut nucleotide. Of course, salah. Okay, nucleotide tak, dia tak involve dia adalah nucleic acid. And then dia kata hydrogen and oxygen. So, dia sebenarnya mungkin refer kepada water. Salah juga. And then kat sini, dia akan sebut amino acid, the C. Okay, so C boleh jadi betul lah. Okay, kita tengok the last one. Okay, the bond that uh, uh, form uh, when the electron are sharing their electron. Okay, so kat sini, uh, dia involve sebenarnya covalent bond lah. So, the answer is wrong. So, the answer kat sini, terus kita tahu C. Okay, and then what are the monomers of nucleic acid? Ah, uh, Simple and direct to the point. It should be nucleotide. Tak ada jawapan lain. Okay, so awak boleh tengoklah structure of nucleotide. Okay, ha, kalau awak kena recall balik, dia teri daripada phosphate and then dia ada ribose sugar. Uh, uh, sorry, pentose sugar yang mana it could be ribose or deoxyribose and also consists of nitrogenous base. Yang mana awak belajar, uh, dia ada ATCG. Okay, kalau DNA dia adalah... Um, Timing lah kalau dia adalah RNA, dia adalah uracil. Okay, next adalah, okay, so, uh, cytosine makes up 22% of the nucleotide in the sample of DNA. What is the percentage of adenine in the sample? Okay, first thing first, before you answer this question, you have to know what is bonded with but what. Okay, uh, so pairing dekat sini, we know that uh, dekat sini, uh, nitrogen, dia talk about nitrogen and uh, nitrogenous bases. So we know that A, okay, um, Pairing with T by 2 hydrogen bond. And C, pairing with G by 3 hydrogen bond. Okay, so kat sini dia kata, okay, contohlah saya bagi situasi yang contohnya. Kalau lah dia adalah adenine, ni ada 10. Timing pun perlu ada 10. Ha, the number of the molecule should be similar. Why? Because of both of them pair to each other. Pairing. So, berapa bilangan dia, partner dia mestilah sama. Okay, so kat sini dia kata, kita bayangkanlah kalau um, nitrogenous bases ni, uh, we focus kepada nitrogen bases saja sebagai 100% dalam satu structure DNA. Okay, so daripada 100% tu soalan bagi tahu cytosin ni dia ada 22%. Okay, kalau dia kata 22% cytosin, guanin also okay, akan ada uh, 22%. Okay, so both of them make up 44%. Okay, so berapa rest? What's the rest? Okay. 56% and then we know that from 56% actually consists of uh, adenine and thymine. So since kita tahu both of them should be in equal amount, so we just divide into 2. Sebab soalan minta adenine. Kita minta adenine. So 56 divide by 2, 28%. Okay, inilah dia. Alright. Saya akan meneruskan perbincangan kita pada hari ini dengan soalan 9. A cell has circular DNA, is small and simple, and no nucleus or membrane-bound organelles. So, clue yang pertama adalah circular DNA. Clue yang kedua adalah no nucleus. Clue yang ketiga adalah no membrane-bound organelles. So, what type of cell is this? Berdasarkan ciri-ciri yang diberikan, maka jawapan yang betul ialah prokaryotic cell, iaitu C. But why not eukaryotic cell as the answer? Because DNA of eukaryotic cell is linear and uh, the eukaryotic cell has a distinct nucleus and also it has membrane-bound organelles. And eukaryotic cell also divided into two types of cells. So there are animal cell and plant cell. So let's follow. Which of the following organelles has a single membrane? Clue yang diberikan ialah organelles has a single membrane. Cuba recall pembelajaran kita tentang organelles. Boleh tak anak-anak pelajar menyeraikan organelles yang mempunyai single membrane? So ia terdiri daripada Golgi body or Golgi apparatus, rough ER which is interconnected platen sac or we call it a systeme, and then smooth ER. The a network of tubule, and last one is a lysosome, which contain hydrolytic enzyme. 
Baik, kita tengok pilihan jawapan yang uh, diberikan. Okey, yang pertama adalah A mitokondria. So kalau kita tengok pada gambar rajah yang ada di sini, okey, uh, mitokondria mengandungi outer dan juga inner membrane. Okey, and then the folded inner membrane that we call it as a cristae. And last one is matrix of mito mitokondria. Okay, next, B, nucleus. So, nucleus, apa yang nucleus ada pada structure-nya adalah it also consists uh, outer membrane and inner membrane. Okay, outer membrane is a nuclear envelope. Okay, and then it will uh, enclose by nuclear membrane. Okay, selain daripada tu, dia juga ada uh, nuclear pore. Okay, dan juga nucleus nucleolus. Okay, C. C adalah Golgi body. So, just now kita dah tengok structure Golgi body. Uh, dan D, chloroplast. So, apa yang ada pada chloroplast? So, chloroplast terdiri daripada outer dan inner membrane. And then, dia mempunyai uh, this like sac. Okay, yang kita panggil sebagai thylakoid. And then, the uh, a stack of a thylakoid adalah merupakan granum. Okay. Dan uh, fluid field space dia adalah merupakan stroma. Okay. So, mana satu uh, jawapan yang paling tepat? So, of course. Jawapannya adalah C iaitu Golgi body, a single membrane organelle. Baik, so let's seterusnya. Which of the following molecular components of the lipid bilayer of the plasma membrane possesses a charged polar head and an uncharged non-polar tail? So, clue pada soalan adalah komponen lipid bilayer, polar head and also non-polar tail. Okay, kita tengok dulu plasma membrane structure. Seperti mana yang kita dah belajar, ia terdiri daripada beberapa komponen uh, iaitu fosfolipid by layer. Okay, fosfolipid by layer, kalau kita tengok di sini, dia ada hydrophilic head dan juga hydrophobic tail. Okay, selain daripada fosfolipid by layer, ia ada protein that embedded in the fosfolipid by layer or attached to the fosfolipid by layer. So, yang embedded ni nama dia apa? Nama dia adalah merupakan integral protein. Okay, integral protein. Manakala untuk yang attached kepada uh, phospholipid by layer, namanya adalah merupakan peripheral protein. Okay, selain daripada tu, okay, uh, carbohydrate chain yang berwarna hijau ni, carbohydrate chain and then sekiranya carbohydrate chain itu attached kepada uh, protein, lab, kita labelkan ia sebagai glycoprotein. Okay. Tetapi sekiranya carbohydrate chain attached to the phospholipid, maka namanya adalah merupakan glycoglycolipid. Dan uh, satu lagi, komponen plasma membrane yang perlu kita ambil tahu adalah koles, kolesterol. Maka daripada pilihan jawapan yang diberikan, uh, jelas kita tahu bahawa jawapannya adalah A iaitu phospholipid yang mempunyai polar head dan juga non-polar tail. Okay, soalan 12. Mucus that protects your stomach lining is secreted by which type of epithelial cell? Okay, so uh, dia punya clue dia stomach lining. Uh, iaitu dia punya distribution dia. Dan juga type of epithelial cell. Okay, anak-anak pelajar masih ingat lagi tak? Berapakah uh, jenis epithelial cell yang telah dipelajari? So, dia ada empat kan? Okay, so yang pertama adalah simple cuboidal epithelium. Yang mana distribution dia ada di beberapa tempat. Okay, iaitu antaranya adalah... Uh, lining of kidney tubule, uh, lining of duct, then dia punya function dia adalah for absorption and secretion. Okay, yang kedua adalah simple columnar epithelium. So, simple columnar epithelium distribution dia ada di mana? Okay, kalau dia simple ciliated columnar epithelium, maka location dia adalah berada pada uh, uterus, fallopian tube, but uh, sekiranya dia adalah non-ciliated, okay, yang mana dia mempunyai microvilli, So, location dia adalah pada lining of digestive tract, part of kidney tubule. Okay, so ini adalah merupakan function dia. Adalah more to absorption. Kalau absorption ni dia adalah untuk non-ciliated yang, uh, yang dimaklumkan tadi. Okay, manakala kalau yang mempunyai cilia, dia function dia more to for the movement of substance. Okay, yang ketiga, jenis yang ketiga adalah simple squamous epithelium. So, simple squamous epithelium, distribution-nya adalah pada okay, alveoli of lung, okay, blood vessel, 
part of kidney eh, ada beberapa tempat lah dan function dia adalah uh, for exchange of material by diffusion okey seterusnya yang keempat adalah stratified squamous epithelium dia berada pada skin okey bagi yang keratinized okey tapi kalau yang non keratinized uh, distributionnya adalah pada lining of mouth and esophagus Okay, apa function dia? Dia more to protection. So, the answer is simple columnar epithelial cell. Okay, soalan 13. Schwann cells and nodes of reindeer are found in. So, clue yang pertama adalah Schwann cells. Kemudian, nodes of reindeer. Baik, kedua-dua istilah ini sangat related dengan uh, moto neuron. Okay, yang mana berdasarkan gambar yang ditunjukkan Anak-anak pelajar boleh lihat bahawa so ini adalah merupakan motor neuron uh, that consists of dendrite, cell body, okay, axon and then it will covered by myelin sheath. Okay, the uh, myelin sheath composed by Schwann cell okay, and then node of Rambia. So of course the answer is B, myelinated neuron. Okay, soalan seterusnya, xylem and phloem are examples for what type of tissue? So, the clue is xylem and phloem. Okay, untuk menjawab soalan tersebut, kita kena tengok kepada um, simple mind map yang ada pada slide ini. So, di sini anak-anak uh, pelajar boleh tengok okay, apa yang telah dipelajari di bawah subtopik plant tissue. Okay, dia ada meristematic tissue that consists of apical, lateral, intercalary. Manakala untuk permanent tissue pula divided into two types iaitu ground tissue dan juga vascular tissue. For ground tissue, dia terbahagi pula kepada tiga okay, iaitu parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. Manakala untuk vascular tissue, dia terbahagi kepada xylem and phloem. Xylem and phloem adalah merupakan vascular tissue. So the answer is A. Okay, soalan 15, which of the following is true about ground tissue? So, uh, dia punya clue dia adalah true and about ground tissue. Saya masih lagi menggunakan uh, simple mind map yang ditunjukkan sebentar tadi. Okay, yang mana kalau tadi kita fokus kepada uh, vascular tissue. Tapi sekarang ni kita soalannya adalah berkait tentang ground tissue. So, ground tissue consists of Uh, three types of tissue, parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. So that's why the answer is C, consists of parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. Alright, question 16. Which of the following is the longest phase in the cell cycle of human liver cells? Keyword here is longest phase in the cell cycle. So from the diagram here, G1, S, and G2 is the interface. Meanwhile, uh, for prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis is the mitotic phase. So, in a cell cycle, the longest one yang mengambil masa yang paling lama dalam cell cycle is the interface. Lah. So, the answer is D. Next question, question 17. Choose the correct sequence of steps in the M phase of the cell cycle. So, dia minta correct sequence eh, untuk mitotic phase. So, tenang je. Ingat PMAT kan? So, the answer is A lah eh. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Question 18. Which of the following is false about P53 gene? So, uh, dia nak pernyataan yang salah eh. Jadinya kita tahu P53 gene is the tumor suppressor gene. Okay. Tengok satu-satu eh. Statement. A. Produce protein to arrest cell cycle. Yes. True. Statement tu kenapa? P53 gene ni dia akan undergo a transcription to produce mRNA and then mRNA is being translated to protein yang kita panggil sebagai CDK inhibitors. So yes. Dia akan produce protein untuk arrest you punya cell cycle. So, A is correct. B. Becomes activated when there is abnormality in the cell cycle. 
Yes, betul juga. Why? Because only if uh, there is a daily damage uh, ataupun any abnormalities in your cell, so dia kita akan terus activatekan you punya P53 gene untuk you stop the cell cycle. Okay, so B is correct. C, promote apoptosis if the damage that you cannot repair. Okay, let's say kalau you dah tak boleh nak repair. Dah beyond repair, so dia akan terus promote eh. Self killing, self destroy, yang kita panggil proses tu sebagai apoptosis. So statement C is correct. So tinggal D saja. So obviously D salah. Kenapa? Deactivate CDK uh, to promote cell cycle. Yes, yeah, supposed to be the deactivate kan? CDK. Eh? Kenapa? So kalau tengok kat sini CDK inhibitors ni dia akan bind kepada CDK and cyclin and inhibit the action ataupun deactivate the action so that barulah uh, you punya cell cycle tu akan stop stop the cell cycle so statement C eh, sorry statement D ni salah sebab dia kata deactivate kan CDK tu kan so supposed to be the deactivate kan you punya uh, cell cycle lah eh sorry uh, CDK to stop the cell cycle so D is the correct answer the false statement Question 19, at which stage of the cell does the quantity of DNA per cell decrease by half? Okay, dia minta dekat stage mana uh, you punya DNA tu uh, per cell, setiap cell akan berkurang separuh. Okay, tengok eh. Let's say you punya amount of DNA dekat G1, kita ada 23. So, dekat S, uh, DNA replication, so dia akan duplicate jadi 46. So, Dekat you punya G2 still lagi akan remain 46 amount of DNA. So, bila masuk mitotic phase, uh, prophase, metaphase and phase, telophase and cytokinesis. So, dekat prophase still lagi akan 46 uh, amount of DNA. Metaphase pun 46 and phase pun 46 walaupun dia dah attracted opposite poles tapi dia still lagi dalam nucleus yang sama. So, dekat telophase pun sama walaupun dia dah start uh, uh, arriving on opposite poles tapi dia still lagi uh, dalam satu sel yang sama eh. so 46 so only bila dia dah divide into two daughter cells baru kita katakan uh, dia punya amount of DNA itu decrease by half so at, at cytokinesis you punya amount of DNA will decrease by half lah dia back to 23 number of uh, DNA again eh. So the answer should be B lah eh. Cyto kinesis. Sebab per cell eh. Tanya per cell. Okay. Next. Question 20. State the number of tetrads in human cell at prophase 1. Okay. Bila kita sebut tetrads. Maksud tetrads adalah ni eh. We have a two sister chromatid sit together. Okay eh next to each other. Okay, so satu daripada you punya paternal eh, punya ayah satu lagi daripada paternal, daripada you punya mak. Okay. Right. So um, kita tahu dalam human cell kita ada 46 chromosomes. So if uh, number of tetrads, so dia pairing kan so, bila you punya 46 kromosom tu uh, undergo sparing eh, tetrad, okay, so dia akan jadi 23 lah. So, the correct answer is C, 23. 